How can one single raid change my entire perspective of this MMO? The story of Final Fantasy XIV has been a major player in my game time here recently, enjoying the ups and the downs and the major reveals. One such reveal happened when I was playing through the Coils of Bahamut, and honestly, this has taken Final Fantasy XIV from a good MMO to an amazing one. And here's what happened. As a note, major A Realm Reborn spoilers are in this video. You have been warned. So Galactic and I met up the other night because he told me that there was something incredibly important that I needed to play, and that was going through the Coils of Bahamut, which seemed like a basic raid for A Realm Reborn. Inadvertently, as I was going through the Hildebrand storyline, I actually progressed a good portion of the quests leading up to it, and right now I'm literally one text box away from opening the raid. We are joined by Alice, the twin of that butt Aquanaut. She has been researching the massive roar of the Unknown Primal that we heard after beating Daddy Gaius in La Habred. Her search has ultimately pointed her to Bahamut, the major elder primal dragon that we saw in the A Realm Reborn cutscene. Bahamut and her grandfather, Louis Swad, disappeared from existence after the Calamity, and she was determined to find out what happened. Galactic and I enter the coils on a non-level synced mode, as progressing through the raid, devoting the time that it would take to work towards it, isn't really feasible for me right now. We enter into this massive cavern with what appears to be Bahamut's wing plastered straight against the wall. Whatever happened to him caused him to splinter into a bunch of pieces all over the place. Alice gets the feeling that someone is watching her, and we get a very familiar outline of someone we know. We walk up to the end of Coil Turn 1 and see a flying dragon snake? I don't know what this was. Well, if Galactic wasn't here as a sage, I would guarantee be getting my face pushed in. Despite me having good gear and decent mitigation, the snake slaps hard. The slithery boy goes down fairly easily, and I complete Turn 1. And I complete the next two turns essentially just by descending a little bit further, like I didn't really Really do much other than kill a couple of mobs and go down the depths. Huh. We get to this massive open platform that kind of looks like a claw and oh shit it really is a claw. It is Bahamut's claw. We go and stand on his palm and now we are fighting a legitimate dragon. Twin Tan Tania. Twin Twin Tanzania. Twin Tanzania, that's what it's going to be. Galactic is taking his time killing these bosses, so I can see the mechanics and understand the abilities a bit better. We get a little bit of a DPS check when Galactic gets caught in a conflagrate and can't heal me, and Tatiana is over here smacking me with her wind blast. Well, she cruises through and knocks me back into the wall, and if you aren't careful, apparently the wall is an instant death. <laughs> and... I got smacked so hard I got thrown into it. Uh, Galactic also dropped a twister on me, and then that killed me instantly, then Galactic got thrown into the wall from the twister. Pro gamers, we are. We join Alice, who has opened the door to see Primal Bahamut resting at the bottom of this massive crater. This confirms that it was Bahamut who was the Primal that we heard screaming at the end of A Realm Reborn. We get a cutscene of two people, one of which being Louis Swa himself, somehow stuck down here with a disembodied dragon head. A weird sentence. We confirm with Orangutan at the Waking Sands our plan to move forward. Alice brings up a point. How can Bahamut still exist if no one is in his primal posse? Perhaps the Alagons, the people who imprisoned the dragons in Bahamut, found a way to simulate the support and the prayers. We'll find that out later. We get on to the second coil, which is in the Black Shroud. We punch, kick, and dive our way into the giant Alligan ship that apparently was hidden from our vision this whole time, or at least a massive portion of it. We enter here to see the obvious bad guy with a wicked looking armor and glowing red eyes, and it appears that their name is Neil Do. Varnus. And I had to say that six times just to make sure I got it right. Which apparently is not Neil Van Darnus. Galactic provided some context that Neil Van Darnus wanted to bring Dolomud, the space station holding Bahamut, into the Earth and to destroy everything. We climb to the top of this station to fight a sword-wielding Medusa? <laughs> Galactic tells me that this is basically Bahamut's tempered faithful. Interesting uh, that he went with uh, uh, a Medusa, but in the next coil we had to fight some weird robot, but Galactic and I basically get instant deleted. Like, it was not even close. So we exit, and Galactic switches to a ninja so he can burst it down before we all explode. That actually caught me off guard because even he said, damn, this is going to be tough. We enter the last coil and descend all the way down to the bottom and... Somehow, we can see the space station Dalamode, and we are approached by Neil Dos Darnus. He starts glowing red and summoning something. 
Alice spell cast FU to knock off the helmet to reveal a woman? I had to look this up because it turns out that Neil Van Darnus was actually the main villain in 1.0. Apparently the reason Alice said he is because no one knew that Neil Van Darnus actually died a long time ago and that his sister assumed his identity and rose to power. It's a cool minor detail, and if I got that wrong, please comment and let me know. Anyway, this angry chick fuses with a dragon body or something and, and summons a halibrid out of nowhere, but this halibrid looks familiar. That is the same halibrid that Hildebrand and Gilgamesh were fighting over. Noted. Galactic tells me that the coils up until this point that we have done, if we had done them synced, would have been fairly easy, maybe a little bit of progression. But this fight here would have taken a couple of t attempts if not a few weeks of progression to work through. That is terrifying for content that is a part of the base game. I moved to a wall to avoid an attack and actually get murked by the wall because I forgot the wall is instant death. Well, she does some mechanics like Mega Flare and Heaven's Fall, but Galactic has said that this is just one B of a boss to kill. She dies and reveals the, uh, that it was just an illusion all this time. We get a cutscene of Neil Van Darnus back to her old self then a giant light beam flies out of nowhere and it literally impales her through the chest. Turns out that Bahamut took the dying Neil Van Darnus and imprisoned an echo of her as a guardian for the coils. This really isn't looking good for Louis Swa. We turn off one of the regeneration rays and Louis Swa appears right in front of us and casts Whippersnapper Get the Hell Out onto Alice. We get a glimpse of Louis Swa who says piss off and then disappears with his glowing red eyes. Seriously not looking good for our boy. Boomerang has some more information for us to go on and we are trying to find an entrance point for the other regenerate so we can turn them off. We have to stop Bahamut from regenerating. The protection pieces of Dalamud of the space station are no longer active. However, the regeneration aspects of them are. He was basically left in suspended animation for so long that he was meant to be held and never allowed to disappear into the Aether like the other primals. So we go and check out a couple of other places and there's really no noticeable entrances. I mean, if only I could fly, right? Uber Danger calls and says, hey, I have a way that we can get in. Just use the exit that you were just at for the final coils. And this time Aquanaut is joining us. But they basically bicker back and forth this entire time. I mean, uh, like it was really just two siblings fighting. That was that was the first coil, uh, the, the first of the final coils. The first coil fight we get to, it has a weird tentacle slappy guy. Like, I don't know about this one. It's got a weird face, long tentacles. We, well, we kill the boss, but then we see tons and tons of dragons in these containers and then a massive revelation. The dragons are imprisoned here, alive and in agony. Remember, primals need their followers, their worshippers, to cry out to them so Bahamut could be sustained. He has the Aether to be summoned, and he just needed dragons to be in pain. And what better way to summon that pain out of the dragons by holding them into suspended, painful animation. It's literally allowing Bahamut to stay in the, a plane of existence. He was, again, he was imprisoned, not allowed to live, not allowed to die, just exist. Good gracious, that's dark. I mean, like, I don't, I actually, I'm starting not to blame Bahamut. <laughs> well, the alligators thought that it would be better to just imprison the primal to prevent him from being summoned to wreak havoc again sometime in the future. Ugh, good gods. We get the bottom of this megasphere to fight a three-headed metal dragon hydra thing, and he has some cool bits. I die instantly. And then the twin teamsters point out that basically Bahamut was trapped here for eons without being able to save his followers, what, he, what a primal is supposed to do and he's had all that time to be pissed off and angry. Again, are, are we the baddies? <laughs> we get to the last coil. Now we are fighting the evil Louis Swa. Louis Swa tells us that the Alligans caused the dragons to summon Bahamut and then trapped Bahamut in the space station. Aquanaut drops the line of transcending the limits of man's existence and Louis Swa turns into a giant phoenix. Louis Swa has become a primal phoenix. <laughs> what the hell? This this one, this caught me off guard. I, I actually said, what the... Freak. Caffeinated Dad gives the nod to decimate and it's time to take out Grandpa. After a fairly quick fight, um, I die again just to, to make sure things happen the way they are. We get a quick explanation of what the hell happened at Cartonu. Louis Swa tried to imprison Bahamut, but that failed. So he used all of his energy to save the Warriors of Light and then say, waited for his death. We then get a masterpiece of a cutscene where he's surrounded by the Twelve's crystals and gains a massive power boost to fight Bahamut and in Old Master Roshi style breaks through a massive portion of Bahamut's fiery inferno ball. Louis Swa stops the explosion 
implodes the ball of death and literally punches through the beating heart of Bahamut, leaving him to be shattered and destroyed amongst other things here in the Calamity. Holy hell, that is such a cool revelation. Louis Swa says that the prayers of Eorzea and his own desperate wish to save a dying realm infused him with the powers of the primal Phoenix. He relinquished the power as soon as he was finished with Bahamut, but Bahamut snatched him up and enthralled his dying essence, so Louis Swa became the chamber guardian. We walk up and turn off the regen aura, but then Bahamut blasts out a fiery ball, knocking everyone down. Alice and Alfred stand up, and with the power of siblingship, they block the fiery blast, giving us a chance to fight Bahamut and defeat him once and for all. We enter into the realm of Bahamut to see his prime form. Cue the epic music, and here we go. We begin the fight to work him down, and basically he's smacking the shit out of me. Fire blast, flattening me, and doing all that. Galactic is just hanging in the background, healing me, allowing me to just uh, DPS him down. Good gracious. Well, he throws out some mega flares and everything else, and eventually we phase. Galactic laughs as I get thrown into the wall to instant die. This is like the third time I've died from uh, from walls. <laughs> Then we get an ad phase where all the dragons from the Mycertia breed, Mycertia breed, which were the dragons that prayed to Bahamut, they come out to do his bidding once more. Well, he does his big blast Tetra Flare, which incinerates the entire arena, and Bahamut appears again only to fight us for the final time. We see some more of his abilities, especially his soft enrage, Ankh Moron? Moron? Yeah, that's what it is. And then we get to kill the big baddie. Not gonna lie, this was epic. Even without it being level synced, this was epic. We turn off the last regenerator and Bahamut disintegrates and falls into nothing. Alice and Aquanaut work on becoming better brother and sister, but seriously, this was a wild ride. The coils of Bahamut changed my outlook on MMOs, and especially Final Fantasy XIV. I came into this game thinking that the story was a part of it, but not really the way that I had experienced it before. Guild Wars 2, WoW both had their stories for sure, but I never really stuck with them or had memorable experiences from those main campaigns. And now in Final Fantasy XIV, I literally could not believe that Louis Swass did survive the blast from Bahamut, but basically went Super Saiyan to save all of Eorzea with his last punch. Watching the intro trailer for A Realm Reborn makes it appear that he saved us and sacrificed himself, which is somewhat true in both cases, but the amount of dedication to the plot and the story of this game is incredible, and the way that they make it almost come full circle is untouchable. I would expect this from an RPG, as that is the main focus of the game, is usually the story, but having this in an MMO where essentially the story is your guiding hand was incredible. Absolutely mind blown. The coils not only have given me a hint of what the rating is going to look like in coming expansions, but it's a perfect wrap up in my mind of A Realm Reborn. We received the much needed closure and other details that we have missed otherwise. I'm just, I'm just blown away <laughs> by the storytelling and I can't believe that it's this kind of story's common occurrence in this MMO. I'm, I'm baffled. Uh, it was, it was incredible. It has given me drive and hope moving forward to see the new expansions and see how the story continues to grow. It's it's looking more and more promising, e e even as I'm just patiently grinding my way through the MSQ. I I'm looking forward to this experience and everything else that unfolds with it. I recently talked about my first 50 hours playing Final Fantasy XIV, and I kind of reviewed it with my experiences to see if it was worth my time. And I think you can kind of get the idea of where I'm going with it, but you can check that video out right here. As for now, Stay caffeinated, folks.